Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're checking out Substance Painter. Why? Well, three reasons. First off, Substance Painter is absolutely awesome. And if you've never heard of it, I'm going to introduce you to something absolutely wonderful. This is a game-changing program that really brought the PBR, or physically based rendering, workflow for texture creation to the masses. It is supported by pretty much every game engine ever. So this is the tool for PBR development. And if you've not seen a PBR workflow before, stay tuned. This will impress you. Number two, Substance Painter Fall Release was just released. Uh, we're going to be covering that later on in this video as well. What's new in the fall update? And then finally, a little birdie told me there's a thing called Black Friday coming up. And Algorithmic is going to be having a sale, including their Substance stuff. So I think some people are going to be wondering, is this program right for me? And hopefully we can answer that question for you. So that's what we're going to do in this video. First, a little hands-on presentation of Substance in action and then we're going to cover the news of what's new in the fall update and hopefully you'll be as impressed as I am. Now I gotta warn you right up front, I am no master of this tool. I am barely competent and that is pushing it. I'm actually familiar with a version that is plenty of versions out of date so my demonstration will be very cursory. We're gonna just scratch the surface but I'm still gonna give you a pretty good idea of what Substance Painter is all about. But if you want to learn more do be sure to check their channel and real honest to goodness experts showing you how it works. Now one of the big reasons why you should be so uh, interested, I guess, in uh, Substance Painter is it and Substance Designer are ubiquitous in the gaming industry now. If you want to get a job at a AAA studio, they are all pretty much using it in their workflow. You see some of the AAA games that have been created using it and the studios that are behind it and the game engines that are behind it. You'll see from these logos right here, Crytek, um, Unity, and, and uh, Nintendo, and um, you know, pretty much every modern game engine, including open source game engines such as Godot, all support a PBR workflow, and this is the granddaddy of the PBR workflows. So in gaming, this is a ubiquitous tool. It's as popular as like Max, Maya, ZBrush, Substance. Those are kind of like the trinity plus one of tools in that workflow area. So it's definitely one of those things that if you want to get a job in the industry, it is relevant to you. And if you are working as an indie, well, there's also an indie version available that is a much reduced cost. So even for an indie developer, this should be of some interest. All right, so let's jump in with my brutal demonstration. And here is the primary substance painter workflow or interface. On the left-hand side here, you see an FBX model that I've opened up. Coincidentally, that model is about 100 megabytes in size, and I'm running this on a slow machine. So the performance is pretty solid. On the right-hand side, you see the texture maps for that model. This model is uh, split across three different texture sets, one for the head, one for the body, one for the base. And I'm going to quickly just apply a material to each one, and we'll work from there. Now, there are a bunch of materials and smart materials. A smart material is pretty much a pre-configured material. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and add one to each spot. So the base, we want it to be like a clear black plastic. And we can do that. See here, latex black, just drop it in here. And this is layer support, just like you're used to from Photoshop. So you can draw on top of other layers. Now there's a whole bunch of other stuff we can do. We can do things like generators for creating a dust layer. We can do uh, alpha masking. There's a whole lot of power down there. But as you saw, we just brought it in and there is that base level layer created for us. And there you can see is the texture map that was automatically generated as a result. So if you wanted, you could just export this now and you were done. Uh, it actually works that simple. Now the body, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select a different one. We'll make the body chrome and we'll drop that in there. And you can see the body is going to update accordingly. Now you'll notice it is very, very shiny. And here's the generated texture as a result. We'll look at that shininess in just a second. But you'll see here, I can hold down Alt and then using a combination of mouse buttons, we can take a look at our guy in the scene. Uh, we can pan it around, we can zoom it around, zoom in and out, etc. And finally, let's go to our head and we'll make our head a coppery color. So just drop that in right there. And obviously this is very basic level stuff, but we just created three different materials for our object. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is we're working again with a PBR workflow. And that means instead of just using a diffuse and a normal channel, you're using a bunch of different channels. So you see, if I could hit the C key, we can flip through the different ones. So if we got our base color or our diffuse channel right there. We have our metallic cha can channel right there, our roughness map there, our normal map, our height map, and so forth. And I hit the M and we can see the generated results. So in Substance Painter, we're actually working with and creating all of those different maps at once. Now, in terms of these smart materials and materials we're seeing down here, well, the cool thing is, well, one, you can generate them using a tool such as Substance Designer. That's the entire thing what Substance Designer is all about. It's for recreating real world materials algorithmically. But they've also got their online sharing program with like 1,100 plus materials that have been shared by the community. So if you're looking for a 
uh, material like what we're seeing here, all these different, different there's layers of like concrete, for example. If you're looking for a concrete material, someone has made one for you. You can definitely go ahead and download it online through their sharing application. Okay, so we've got our base guy set. We've got the three different um, layers with uh, three different materials configured to them. You'll notice it's awfully bright. And what we might wanna do is go ahead and actually change that out. And this is actually using environment maps. So what we can do is use one of the predefined, and again, the online site has a whole bunch more of these available, but we can change out the environments like this. So say we wanna have um, this map instead, as you hover over it, you're getting a preview of it. We want that for our environment. We can just drag that up here, drop that on there like that. And then that will be your new lighting model. We can also turn, make it so it's visible or not visible and turn the blurring on and off. So there is the uh, environment map that is lighting our scene. We can do th cool things like rotate it and you'll see the immediate result on our material. And you can also change out the camera beyond what we're gonna touch with today. There's other things here like you've got an undo history right there. Um, and then we've got some things for your shader settings and, and you can change how the shader is going to do things like ambient occlusion, intensity, uh, subsurface scattering, parallax occlusion mapping. And these are all settings that are also controllable in most game engines. So you can get a more one-to-one -one actual recreation of the material you want to use in your end result game engine. But we're really just scratching the surface right now. So uh, speaking of which, so now we've got our head copper material here. Now what we might want to do is go ahead and paint on it. So let's do a... Uh, um, we'll do a brush and we'll do a charcoal and then we'll go to uh, create a new paint layer. So we can come up here and we can go ahead and say add a new layer and we're going to paint on it. Now we can go ahead. Uh, we could give it, we could make it, uh, we can do a couple things here. We could make it a base level. We could fill it completely with one material and then put an opacity, uh, like a opacity map on top of it, a black or a white map, and then basically scratch away the bits we don't want. But in this case, I'm just going to actually paint another color. So we're going to go down here, we'll pick our material, and then we're going to do a bit of a brass mix in. And we can just paint it on our surface and you'll get the blending of the two together immediately. You're seeing it's updating in real time up here. You can also paint by uh, polygon. So you can actually select um, polygon meshes as it stands there and fill them accordingly or, or UV sets and do a flood fill. But we can just kind of paste in right there. Now you'll notice your brush controls are up here or you can right click and have fine tune control over your actual brush, over your alpha channel, your stenciling or your uh, material. And so you see here that we're using a uniform color material. We can drop a material in there. So if I want to paint with concrete, we drop in concrete as our material. And then now we're painting with concrete. So if we wanted to make that a little smaller, slow down our flow, slow down our opacity. We could just kind of blend in concrete with our existing layer. And so you can mix and match your colors together quite simply. Now we also get so much more capable than that. So say we wanted to come in here and we wanted to weather this guy out a bit. So what I can do with our color, our copper up here, we can go down here to say, for example, particles, and you'll see all of these different options. So I can actually do a, like a liquid stream and then paint, and this is, mimicking that effect. So you see we're painting our concrete effect on here using a stream of particles over time. We can also do it with a burn. So for example, let's go back here, select our material, something fine rust. All right, so we're gonna burn rust into our, so let's go back here with rust selected and then do a burn. And then you'll see, we'll just do a straight out burn and you'll see you can scorch the surface easily to recreate kind of erosion. You can do fracturing. You could actually cut it with a laser all using kind of polygon effects. It's really quite cool. And then once again, if I hit the C key, we flip through, there are the various different maps and channels that are being created. So there, for example, was our normal map. So that's gonna you know, simulate a level of detail that isn't necessarily there, a level of depth that's gonna be caused by the scorching and this, this, the things that we have done here. We also break out with uh, veins going on. And then as I mentioned earlier, we could do things like, I could go ahead and make this top level layer a, um, make that a fill layer. So add a fill. Actually, I'll add a new layer here. So adding a new layer in, I'm gonna right click and we'll add a fill to it. And what it would basically do is replace everything with what we've just done. So probably not what you wanna do, or this is generally what you would do at your base level here. One of these will actually have a fill layer in it. So what we're gonna do is let's say we wanted to add some rust over our surface. So we come down here, we got our fill layer, we go to our materials, 
And we can scroll on down. We can set each value accordingly, like our roughness metallic map. We can set a base color, or what we can do is just drag in a material. And that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna come down here. I'm gonna find a Rust material, or we could download one from the community. So here's Coarse Rust, and we'll drop that onto the material of our fill layer. And what that basically does is just fills the entire thing with that layer. Now, that's generally probably not what you're gonna wanna do because you've just overwrote all your lower subsequent layers. So now what you're gonna wanna do is go back to this layer here, and now what we're gonna wanna do is add a mask to it. So we can add a mask, and you can add a white mask, which will show it in its entirety, except for the black bits, or we can add a black mask, which will show nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So now we've kind of basically undid everything we just did, but now we can mess with that layer. We can mess with that, oh, that map right there through various different mechanisms. So we can come here, we can add a grunge on it, and then kind of, oops, I have a, a mask set. Well, there's another thing we can do actually, so I'll show you that as well. So we could do, go to our masks right here. We got different ones. So we could mask in dirt or we can go, why do I have that still selected? Okay, just a sec, alphas. And we can control, this is for painting that black or white layer. So we got different tools we can use there. So if we want to just have a um, Celtic cross, for example, and this will paint out the opacity layer. So we can just kind of um, hold down control and, and middle wheel or right click and control our brush that way. And now I can just paint. And that whole area will be erased out and that underlying area will then be effective. So I can, once again, I'll show you that again. So boom, and that just painted that in our opacity layer right down there. And then that rust is kind of showing through. So you can use this for some really cool stuff like, um, you know, having layering through your grime and rust layers. We can do some fingerprints. So if your underlying layer was like smudged in, so you can kind of fingerprint into your scene and have it, kind of layer through like that. So you could create some really complicated materials by layering them together using those opacity layers and so on. Or the other thing you can do right here is actually come in and use, um, well, we did a fill layer already. We could also use a generator. So where is generator, is it effect? Yeah, so we could come in and create a generator and a generator allows you to select from various things. So I could do a dirt layer generator and use basically algorithmically have it do so it all of its different settings and values are brought in for us so uh it will do dirt mapping for you so the areas that you're seeing through are being done by the generator there's some really cool and powerful things you can do here and then on top so go back to our color layer there uh, we can do other things like uh let's go back over here we'll take a look um we got tools here so we can do things like bullet impacts if we want to have some yeah, come on that should be it. Come on, open up. Oh, did not mean to turn you off. Here, I'll do it, my paint layer. Oh, okay, I did not mean to paint my bullet effects because I still have my particle on. But you get a nice, so we can actually come in down here and add screw heads, like so. Or we could do metal stitching, like so. Or we could, if we needed to have a zipper on our model, we can do so like so. And it will automatically draw in and you get, when you come over here and you look at the various different channels, that will create the appropriate metalness map, height mapping, the normal map that you would expect to see from a zipper texture. And again, you can download a bunch of these tools from their site as well. And beyond that, anymore and I will just be butchering what the functionality is. But this should have given you a pretty good idea of what you can do in Substance Painter. It is just such an incredibly capable tool. There's also a full renderer built in here. So if we want, we can switch over to the IRA rendering mode. And this will go ahead and take a second. Again, I'm not running this on the fastest machine ever. And this is where you're really gonna notice that. But IRA is going to do a, um, you'll see over here the results as it's going, uh, but it will do a real-time preview render of your material. So we can move this guy around and pan this guy over a little bit. And then we'll let IRA do its thing. So this is basically ray tracing the scene so you can see what the final version of your material will look like in the highest level as rendered from IRA. So pretty powerful stuff. And then when you're done, what you can do is basically come on in here, go to file, uh, export your textures. And this is where you slot it into your workflow of choice. And there's again, where this guy has been really worked into various different settings. So you've got pre-configured for Arnold Renderer, CryEngine, Corona, 
Uh, let's see, you got generic PBR workflows. You've got Unity 4 and 5, Unity HD render pipeline configuration, Unreal Engine. So if you wanted to export it out for Unreal Engine, it will automatically set the various different maps and name them for you, and it will generate them out as a result. And one of the cool things that was just added in the new release is it's also got the ability to bundle and package for mobile, which we will get into next. So that is... Um, yeah, that's Substance Painter. It is a very capable program that you just saw someone give you a very uh, butchered demonstration of what it's capable of, but you should still hopefully understand, at least have seen some of the power that's locked away in there. And again, I am only scratching the surface of what you can do with this program. And when you see things with really awesome texturing going on these days, there's a pretty good chance that that material was probably created using Substance Painter and Substance Designer. And then what just happened is they just released their fall update. This was a free update for people that had the current version and the big things in it. One was sparse virtual textures. Basically, they rewrote their core engine uh, so that they can do a whole lot more with the same amount. Basically, you can have um, heavy loads on lesser computers, which means you can have up to 300 UV titles with no hiccups. Um, they've also made it so that you can have um, sparse, completely rewritten memory and texture management system it means lower recommended system specs, the ability to load an enormous amount of data in the tool. Coincidentally, that file we just saw was 150 megabytes in size running on a four-year-old laptop running a GeForce 970. So they're not really lying there. Uh, on top of that, they've added a symmetry and layer stack improvements, a nice symmetry tool like this, so you can paint two sides of the surface at the same time at, with this controllable interface for where the symmetry line is. Uh, layer stack UI and user experience, so improvements to the UI in general. Uh, new temporal anti-aliasing, so you can see the results of turning it on or off there. Coincidentally, they do very nice uh, release notes, so I will, of course, link this down below. Uh, mip mapping textures now use a set of mip maps to avoid more, more, more and flickering effects when zooming away with noisy surfaces, like so. New anisotropic shader in action, you can see there, they updated their clear coat shader, as you can see there. Uh, 2D viewport export, this is also important for mobile, so you can now, uh, what you see in a 2D viewport as a single high resolution texture. Uh, common request from those of you working with mobile games, this feature will allow you to export the results of the PBR lighting and reflections all baked into a single diffuse texture. So if you can't support the full workload, you can also kind of capture it in, in a single texture, have it color only, but have it make it look like it's a whole lot more capable than it really was. So better for lower end hardware. Uh, dithering support, uh, new texturing XYZ seamless face scan. So there's a face scan material in there. Anseotropic uh, gradient patterns, updated baked lighting filter. And then again, as I mentioned earlier on, there is a full um, trial, 30 day trial available out there. So if you wanna check it out, you can download it right here. Uh, Substance, I guess I should have mentioned this right up front. It's available for, oh, now I don't remember. Um, Win Windows, Mac, and Linux? All right, give me a sec, I'm gonna look that one up for sure. But, and then before we move on to that, you'll see here are the various different licensing options. Again, Black Friday is coming. Expect these to be discounted. It is a subscription-based system. You can buy it at $20 a month for an indie license. That is if you make a less than 100K a year or for $239 a year. Um, or they have their pro licenses for uh, more money. It's a thousand bucks a year if you're in a professional environment or a hundred dollars a month, basically. And then we've got enterprise licensing and they've also got educational options. So if you are a student, um, do be sure to check into that, uh, which is pretty cool. And then once again, we can go back here for the downloads. There we go, there's my answer. So it's available for pretty much every platform. You got Windows, Mac and Linux uh, versions of it available. And then you can also try all their other products that I'm not uh, demoing today, such as Substance Designer, um, the Bitmap 2 material material program. And then they've got plugins directly for various different content creation tools out there as well. So quite a bit covered in one period of time. That was my ghetto uh, kind of demonstration of Substance Painter. Again, if I tweaked your interest though, do be sure to check out some professional art channels. Substance Painter is really one of those game changer packages. And it's uh, it's the norm in studios now. So if you are looking to work professionally, you probably want to get this under your belt if you are an artist. At the very least, check out the 30-day trial. You can learn quite a bit in 30 days and it is fully um, and completely unlimited. So definitely worth checking out. And again, there is that sale coming up um, 
Uh, I think it goes live actually on Black Friday, unlike everybody else. But do stay tuned. On Thursday, I will have my Black Friday um, for game developers list up. So hopefully you'll be able to see it there then. So let me know what you think. Are you using Substance Painter? Or were you just introduced to Substance Painter? If so, what did you think of it? Are you thinking about checking it out? Are you looking forward to a sale on it? If that's the case, let me know all of those things. Comments down below. And again, sorry for butchering it. It's not a program I use on a daily basis. So I'm like just moderately competent in it. But hopefully I still like scrape the surface enough to whet your appetite to what this program is actually capable of. All right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.